Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folani. Well, it's the last day of the week and um, now I'm not going to be too predictable and say, um, thank God it's Friday. I just said it. <laughs> okay, what could we talk about to today? Um, I, I thought we might go to Edo because um, actually we'll be having on, um, you know, an illustrious um, Edo citizen, Honorable Abdul Oro, a one-time commissioner in the place. Uh, he also was a member of the House of Representatives, and he'll be coming on the program um, shortly uh, to because he wants to, you know, air what he considers um, a strange situation in Edo State. Long story short, uh, Honorable Oro is not amused by the fact that um, he feels his group is being hounded. And what is this group? We're talking about the EPM, Edo people's movement. And by the way, the coordinator of EPM is a gentleman, comrade Carlis Imolore, uh, according to news reports. Now, here, here's the rub. If you, uh, according to Honorable um, Oro, he said what happened on this fateful day when there was a meeting attempt, an uh, attempt for Edo people's movement to have a meeting uh, that um, it, it was, uh, it, the meeting was supposed to be in a, let, let me just be sure of that now. The meeting was to be, so supposed to be in Ibalari, if I got that right. I'll be corrected, you know. Um, now, he says it was effectively an assassin assassination attempt. I've seen newspaper reports. They, they reported it as, um, what, thugs, suspected thugs, alleged thugs, uh, just came to route out their meeting, even though they had got all the requisite um, permissions. And so I'm wondering, is this the Edo State House of Assembly um, crisis extending itself? Well, Honorable Oro is going to be here shortly, Lagos traffic and all of that, but he will be here shortly. But in the meanwhile, um, we've reached out across to um, Edo State itself, and uh, in Benin City um, right now is... Um, uh, um, right. Uh, uh, Reverend Olu Martins. Reverend Olu Martins has been on the program before, but right now he's watching this and listening to this um, in Edo State. And so I, I can start with him even before I get Honorable Oro uh, on this set. Um, uh, good morning, Reverend Martins. Good, good morning, Folarin. Good morning, Th CBC crew. Indeed. Thank you very much uh, for, you know, as it were, coming on, on the program. Now, what... what I would like to ask, what exactly is the situation? We have something of an idea in the sense that, um, uh, depending on who is talking, you say all is not well in the uh, Edo State House of Assembly. But first of all, the APC group in Edo State called EPM, Edo's People's, Edo People's Movement, as you heard in my introduction, they are alleging, at least uh, Honorable Oro has said as much, that you know, any Nigerian should be free to have a meeting anywhere, but he believes that he's been hounded by official sources and that a meeting was disrupted in such a violent manner that he almost could think of it as an assassination attempt. Would you, could, could you give me your comments? Because you're on ground. Yes. Th thank you very much. Again, let me thank um, TBC for situating this very um, topical issue. Indeed, it was Patrick Henry that said, and I'd like to quote him, that the collective freedoms of you and I cannot be guaranteed as long as the actions and inactions of government is shrouded in secrecy. Uh, so we appreciate the media as a program of the estate for bringing these very topical issues uh, to the front burner. Having done so, let me do a political preamble as to what is transpiring very just now in a do state. Sure. Upon the emergence of Godwin or Basaki as um, the governor of um, Edo State. No sooner did he, did he emerge as governor that they began to be dissenting voices as to his style of governance. And what I mean by his style of governance, uh, you understand where he's coming from. He's coming from the organized private sector where they like to get value for whatever, um, whatever you do. If the man gives you a naira, for instance, he wants to get value for it. That, that, is, that is background. And so naturally, he would find it difficult to um, patronize people who are political careerists by nature, who have uh, who's not done a whole lot of things before, whose job it is to uh, who consider Nigeria as an annex job, their private estate, where all they do is to benefit from the crumbs, uh, or if you like, even the cake, uh, sharing from the national cake. So the governor went about how he knows how to govern those states. And then certain persons began to feel 
that because of the role that they played in the emergence of Governor Baseki as governor, they had not been duly compensated. I, I wish that Honorable Aduoro is in the studio. You know, very he will be here because, very shortly. Yes, 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 because I like you know I like you know for him I like to say this thing right in front of him because the initial narrative uh, by those who were the arrowhead and spokesperson uh, of the now what is known as EPM was that they were not they had not been duly compensated as uh, having worked assiduously and tirelessly for the emergence of uh, the governor of Basek. I'm not a member of the APC, so I cannot, att I cannot attest to that. Uh, what they mean by compensation, he is probably... When, 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 when you say you're not a member of the APC, therefore not a member of the ruling party in Edo State, um, uh, uh, however, you, when you were on our program, uh, you didn't sign yourself on as a member of ABC, but as you know, an Edo citizen, right? Uh, who keeps, oh, no, an, that, yeah, who, yeah, who and keeps an eye on the ground and uh, knows what's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've, and, I've, and I've done this for a long time, all right? Even when Adam Soshomole was, you know, was governor of um, you know, Edo State, we have to speak truth to the power, truth to, speak truth to power. We have to engage you know, governance because it's a common patrimony. Nobody has the right to distribute a common patrimony without active participation from the citizenry. Uh, so if you like, uh, this is citizens reporting, uh, even though it's not professional reporting, but this is citizens reporting, citizen you know, uh, engagement. So that's where it started from. And then it began to build to what snowballed to now the famous um, House of Assembly crisis, people not presenting themselves. Okay, uh, oh, oh, as, a, as a more fact, so, sorry to interrupt you, Reverend. I, I was saying that um, Honorable Oro would be in very, very shortly. Uh, in, in fact, he's in, but I, but I don't want to lose this call. Uh, you, you never can guarantee a call. So we're, we're, we're seeing if we can do the little quote-unquote magic of our Honorable Oro, you know, actually coming on set while you are, are speaking. There's a one, one way that we can do that. Uh, uh, I, I'm being told let's go on a break, you know, no, 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 to no, make no, assurance doubly no, no sure. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back so you can continue because, um, indeed, Honorable Abdul Oro uh, has, uh, has arrived, and um, we'll continue the story right after this very, very short break. Thank you very much for your patience. Okay, welcome back, and um, I think everything is in place now. Um, uh, Honorable Abdul Oro is in place. Uh, good morning to you. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. Indeed, thanks a million for coming. And we also have um, Reverend Olu Martins on the line uh, in Benin City, I believe. Uh, Reverend uh, Martins, you're in Benin City? Yes, I am in Benin City. Oh, okay. Okay, so I, I, I had interrupted you. Please continue now. Um, what The question I had asked is, give me uh, a situation report, and uh, what do you know of... Um, um, EPM, because um, it's still an APC, uh, these are members of APC as well. And so you, were, you started off by telling me that, look, let you give me a, a bit of a political, um, you know, landscape um, 
uh, roundup. Please continue. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, let me welcome Honorable Abdul to the studio. Thank you. Um, I, I, I was saying that um, very before now, upon the emergence of uh, Governor Gordon Abasaki as the governor of those states, certain persons didn't like his style, you know, of governance. And the initial narratives that I know of the of the Adult People's Movement um, was that, so that we don't lose sight of it, was that they had not been duly compensated for the job that they did in the emergence of the governor as a governor of um, you know, Edo State. The Edo State House of Assembly crisis is secondary to that narrative at the you know, initial. And the narratives are you know, in the public space because we know people who were pushing that uh, narrative. They're not unknown to the you know, Edo people. Snowballing from there, it entered into the um, Edo people's uh, uh, movement and then the crisis in the Edo State uh, House of Assembly. And that's fine because in politics, and in governance, it is about crisis and contention. Sometimes we say that uh, the best form of peace is the one that comes, you know, after there is war. So it's, it's fine that human beings pick up. It is when that bickering begins to affect governance, what is called begins to affect the peace uh, of the land, that those of us who are political watchers become um, worried about it. For instance, okay, I, 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 I beg your pardon, Reverend. I, I beg your yes, pardon, sir. Reverend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much um, where you got to. But since we now have Honorable Oro in the house, um, I'd like him to be able to backtrack a bit on some of the things that you have said and see how, you know, uh, how, how well he accepts um, some of those uh, matters. Now, Honorable Oro, to start off, um, you, nobody can tell your story like you yourself, but could you just help me out a bit with EPM, Edo People's Movement? Uh, it's, a, it's a caucus or a group within APC in Edo State? Well, I'm trying to find out what exactly is EPM. Well, let me uh, thank you very much for having me. And first of all, to react to a little bit of what Olu said. Sure. It's the issue, EPM is not about compensation. Okay. But it's what is EPM? EPM is Edo People's Movement. I know. But it is about good governance in Edo State. Is it a group it is, within? Yeah, yeah, we are all members of APC. Okay. It's a pressure group within, okay. within the APC. A pressure group within yeah, APC. Within, within APC. But compensation. In other it words, you don't really see eye to eye with the governor. It is about political exclusion. Political and exclusion. And also persecution. Okay, the, the, the fight against political exclusion, exclusion and persecution. Persecution. That's what EPM is. And uh, uh, pathetically bad governance oh we have we we watch and see our little resources being frittered away in chartered jets in endless trips to china in phantom projects that we know are not properly planned not issues uh, i mean and and in misdirected we, we had a plan in when, when we came in in 1998 he was part of that plan of course like the billy port the industrial estate and all that we are all part of the plan Yes, but we had other immediate priorities. Benin City was un virtually unlivable when we came in. To drive from the airport to the city center, that is the ring road, could take you about an hour. This was in the Oshio Mali administration. Yes, he was part of it right from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, was about and Obaseki was part of it. Obaseki was the chairman of the economic team. Okay. And also chairman the of the board, the chairman of the uh, uh, IGR committee. Okay. Yeah. So we had to tackle the first things first, the immediate priorities. And then we designed a project called the Benin Storm Water Project to deflow the whole city of Benin. Because during the campaign, a, a whole lot of things happened that we saw. People were dying, people had evacuated from various districts of Benin, Upper Lawani, Upper Siloko, and all of them. They were virtually unlivable. So we had to tackle the erosion problem. This was a 30, the first phase was about 30 billion naira. And we started tackling it. Sometimes you see some of the tunnels almost 10 kilometers long. The okay. drainage. Okay. So we started work on that, and that project was supposed to continue without stop. At, that, at that, that time, there was no EPM. EPM is like two or three months ago. Okay. Yes. And so we had not. We didn't have any. So it, it is. We, then we were watching him. We gave it time to to start properly and continue some of the major projects. We had education reform, rebuilding all our secondary schools. Sure. You know, and then we called it the Red Root Red Roof Revolution. Okay. And then some schools were set out to be special schools. Okay, like the new Era College, which which is now called Samuel Obemudia College, was totally was completely rebuilt. And then we had a program to reform the health sector. The central hospital in Benin was built in nineteen oh three. 
Now, it, it and you were a commissioner in that particular, yeah, I was particular commissioner, administration. Yeah, yeah, you were a commissioner yeah. for? Initially, information and, uh, and, and national orientation. Mm -hmm. Then, much later, I became commissioner for agriculture okay. and commerce and industry. Okay. So, uh, now, where, so, did it, where did it all begin to go bad? Because um, um, I mean by that, that you've just said that uh, President Governor Baseki was a member from uh, was was part and parcel of development efforts in Edo right back to the Oshiomole time. We all know that something has happened, something has gone wrong. If you, anybody who's watching the news knows. Yeah, that. I have just told you what has gone wrong. Yes. First of all, now, there I was I want, a deviation, I want, I want, I a hate. fundamental deviation from the progressive ideas that drive that, that drove the first okay. tenure of, 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 of the administration. Okay. Then he, he created a, a, a situation. Uh, of exclusion. Okay. Now he said he wanted to retire people okay. from politics. Now he said he was going to, now he started bringing in people, uh, some of his friends, and then we saw some of our resources be drained away hmm. Uh, hmm. In, in a way that we, we just didn't, we could not accept. Now I'm going to, we could not fold our arms. I, I'm going to guess that, um, I'm, I'm going to guess that from what you've told me, um, and since I know, I trust you, you would not have been shy in expressing his view in Edo State, in, in Benin City itself. Uh, government House would probably have seen EPM, if not you, Honorable Abdul Oro, as a troublemaker to its administration. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think uh, he knows all of us, mm -hmm. the key people who are involved. Mm -hmm. And he, even at a time when we engaged Ushomoli to yeah. say, look, these are the ideas we have observed. He didn't, he wasn't too sure whether this is the way forward. He believed it's our government, we cannot, and he used the phrase, we cannot destroy a house that we have built. Okay. So there were processes to engage. Okay. So you decided. But all these processes to engage were snubbed, mm -hmm. they, were, they were spawned, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, they, we, we saw actions that we think were, uh, 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 were designed to, to weaken the party. Apparently, he has made other plans with the PDP. He started visiting the governor of Delta State, visiting Potako, visiting all the APC, all the PDP government, gov governors, uh, governors around us, visiting some PDP titans and king kingpins in Benin and other places. And then there was this process of trying to uh, erode, the, 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 uh, attacking the APC, attacking key personalities of the APC, and try to drive a wedge between uh, the, the, the base of the party and uh, the, the leadership of the party. Okay. So we watched all this with horror, and we said, this cannot continue. Okay. We must challenge this uh, putative dictatorship okay. and, uh, and, and, about, try to, and, and try to restore our base and restore confidence in our people that we have a progressive administration in those state, and we must work to drive that progressive uh, 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 program, and this the platform, of, and this that, of, that, that threw us up. And this kind of thing, uh, th thinking threw up EPM. Yes. Uh, no, no, threw up. The Oshomole administration uh, uh, and the program, the program uh, 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 that was started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but you were saying that EPM, uh, Edo People's Movement, is just about three months old. It's less, about about that. Yes. We, we came up and we said, look, we cannot continue to allow this. Okay. This governor must change his ways. And then, okay, if no, you no, no, sorry, that sir. was so, sorry, sir. Then I, I know what, we, I've got to manage this time, and yeah. I know there's a lot to to be said. Yeah. Um. Um. But I, I wanted to find out uh, when when was there. When was the attempt of EPM to meet that was frustrated and dangerously so? Okay, let me, let me even start by saying that the first time we met in Benin, everything went well. Then there was another meeting in Edo North at Hauchi. There was no problem. Then I now, then there was supposed to be a meeting in Babaoka. Then they, they, they attacked that meeting. They being? That is, the government sent talks to attack the meeting. Maybe. Before then, before then, when he was, when he, about seven days after he was supposed to proclaim the House of Assembly, mm -hmm. the inauguration of the House of Assembly, mm -hmm. he didn't do that. And when the uh, members elect now decided to hold a press conference, that that night, gone, the, the, the March storm of them at gunpoint to be inaugurated. And those who now went to stay in the hotel to have a meeting, the CSO of the governor led talks to beat them up. I was in my room in Abuja when somebody called me at 1 a.m. to explain that this is what has happened. I see. Yeah. I the see. guy who was elected from Omwa East State Constituency. And, and you say... Well, you, How can this still happen in those states? Okay. So they were beaten up. Even you could see uh, Honorable Seido Shomoli, mm -hmm. the gov former governor's younger brother, same parent, was beaten and he had a black eye. 
you know, so some of this happened, and then we said this is uh, horrible. We had we controlled 24 members out of 24, and APC members being beaten up. Okay. Okay. For for simply asking that they should be inaugurated. Mm. Um, so uh, why why should we allow this to happen? Indeed, and um, and and your attempt, so you, it was your after, attempt to meet after was that event. Let me let me explain this. It was after that event that I posted something on, on my Facebook page, saying that this must not be allowed to stand. Okay. This kind of thing must not be. I have been a member of Parliament at the federal level, a member of the House of Representatives, and the integrity of Parliament is sacrosanct and is key to democracy. You cannot try to muzzle Parliament. How do you how do you do, do things uh, le le legally? Now you have com then after that he, he followed up with by sacking some commissioners, whom he claimed are members of his party, uh, 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 pro Shomole. Then he also he also started sacking local government elected local government chairmen. Okay, you know. So we have seen a tyrant, a, a tyranny rising in Edo State. Okay. I would most resist tyranny. Okay, because tyra if it is wrong. It should be fought. Okay. And um, if you fight it because knowing that it's wrong, you must defeat them. Um, uh, uh, Reverend Olu Martins. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm right here, sir. Oh, oh, okay. So, so, so you, you, you've heard, <laughs> you've heard this. Can you, give me your comments, please, because as you say, you, you're on ground. You're on ground. Yes, sir. Give me, yes. your, give me your. Sorry, I, before then, you asked me about the, uh, these attacks. I, I, yeah, let me come to that. There, there was an attack again in uh, Igweben. Members who were meeting in Igweben, in Igweben local government. Sure. Then on Sunday, uh -huh. Sunday. Okay, before Sunday, I was told on the 28th of uh, September, I had a meeting. I, I was planning a meeting for my house in Iriaru. Then I received information that the deputy governor has directed that they should attack the meeting. They should make sure that meeting Even does not Even though you had police permission? No, no uh, well, in my house. Stage. In my house. Oh, okay, that, 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 that didn't so, require... So when I heard this, I called the commissioner of police. He told me to go ahead that... I have the constitutional right to meet, to hold a meeting. On, on that day, the commissioner of police, the two patrol vans came to my house, uh, from Afuze, the DPO, and from the area command in Igara. Then they came and we had a meeting. Then on my way to Benin, to Benin, I met the deputy governor at the airport, and I told him this is what I had. He simply laughed at me and said there was nothing like that. Then uh, I, uh, on Sunday after that meeting, we had another meeting on, on One West of a do not leaders of the movement, the pressure group. We met and there was no problem. So after that, I do not now say, okay, Omwa is, you are going to host the next meeting. Okay. okay. So when, when they said that, we now made arrangement to host the next meeting at Havina Hotel in Afuze. And that was frustrated. Yeah, we paid for it. We, uh, we called the police, the SSS, the, we got uh, authorization All to go ahead. Mm -hmm. Then later in the night, I got a call from the DPU in Afuze that we cannot hold the meeting at the hotel because the local government chairman, Honorable Andy Ustigwe, came to see him and threatened him that if the, that meeting is allowed to hold, he should think of the, uh, the, 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 the price, the cost, the cost and it should, it should be ready to bear the consequence. So and he advised us to move the meeting to a private location. Okay. So we now took that decision. We now say, okay, fine. We don't want uh, any problem. These are members of our party. I knew all the local government guys. Some of them were former, my former staff, my former PAs, and you know, uh, party, including the party structures and all that. So we decided to move the meeting to Iriaro, my hometown. And then we, in a private location, we put canopies, stuff like that. And then around 12.30 in the afternoon, we, 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 we wrote to the, even the military. Okay. The soldiers were there. They sent 10, about 6 to 10 so, soldiers. So, so, sorry, sir. That, that place was also now attacked. Yes, that was the place I was now attacked. Okay, but, then, but early, luckily they didn't know you were there. They didn't see me. Okay. Let me tell you what happened. So around 12.30, we, we, I sent somebody to go and check if the turnout... Uh, uh, Reverend Martins, I'm going to come to you, but yeah, as you see, he wanted been, to add a bit more detail, yes. and then I'll get your comment. Exactly. So, so you, we, you still we, there, Reverend Martins? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here, sir. Okay. okay. So people started coming in. They started coming in. Then, uh, as they were coming in, I got information that thugs had arrived from Afuze and that they were shooting and attacking everybody. So it was a dangerous so, situation. Yeah, they, these people were led by major, a retired major general. Friday, I read them. You sure of that? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, know everybody. You know as well. You're he a went, journalist. You can't be throwing names I around. I am not throwing so you names know. around. He should come out and deny it. Then okay. we, pro we show evidence to him that we can bring out 10, 20 people who saw him. Okay. So he went to the soldiers. He told the soldiers to leave. And they left. Hmm. Shortly after that, 
Which shooting which, every, everywhere, mayhem. The, the chairman was there. Fortunately, no one was killed. So, but, but I did see one guy, the coordinator yeah, of the, EPM. Absolutely, you his know, name, in, his on, name in, is, on a paper. His, his name is Kalis uh, Imolori. Yes, a lecturer at Aochi Polytechnic. Okay, he was, I, I got he to, was caught on the head with an axe. I, I saw that picture in the paper. On yes, that unfortunate picture. In the paper. Yeah. Now let me hear from Reverend. Uh, 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 they smashed very close. They destroyed the canopy. They destroyed the chairs mm. and threatened everybody. They were asking for me. Meanwhile, I was in the car. I was. We had gone to buy petrol down the road. So as we were coming, we saw this mayhem. So my driver just took a detour, and you know, and then we stayed there until. So then I now called the police. Yeah. They came in. Yeah. The area commander now came with the DPO. So we went around. They started taking. Uh, uh, talking to people and taking pictures and everything. It, so I, it does I, have, sound, I filed a petition with Inspector General Police. That's where we are now. It, sounds, are. it sounds like a like a very hairy situation. Yes, uh, but for was. the love of God, yeah. maybe. Uh, now, uh, uh, Reverend Olu Martins, um, yeah. your, your, your comments, please. That you know, what's what's your impression about the idea of people not being free to meet in a legitimate, in a legal, you know, uh, meeting? Thank you very much. I, I'm excited, first of all, that um, Honorable Abdul Oro is from the civil society extraction. Um, so he's able to situate these issues within um, the interest of the public. Because he's, for instance, um, talked about political exclusion. And for me, it's six and a half a dozen. Remember, I said that the challenge of the EPM at the issue is that they felt that they were not being compensated for the job that they have done in the emergence of this governor. He has used political exclusion. What it means is that they have not been included in how um, governance or positions have been shared within the ambit of uh, the APC-led administration in those states. I, I, I'm, I'm asking a question. The deputy governor perhaps has a longer history with the party than Aboro. He is still with his principal. The secretary to the state government um, has come a long way in the APC back, you know, to the, in the very very South Arabian Ogu, is still with the APC. The party, save for the secretary of the party, everybody is in support of the administration of uh, the uh, uh, Governor Gordon Obasito. So when you talk about political exclusion, you create the impression that everybody uh, within the, the APC, even when I do not want to hold brief for the APC, you create the impression that everybody in the APC is, uh, is, is against the government. It's not true. A handful of people within their party have their challenges with the governor for reasons best known to them. But there are still a, a large number of people who are in consonance with the procedures and processes of administration of God of and Obasaki. Then you talk about good governance, and uh, I say, excuse me. And I'm, I'm not sure that there's any governor who has been as conservative. And let me tell you, and he knows. This governor does not. He, 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 uh, uh, Honorable Oro spoke about wasteful. You know. Let me. Let me. Let me. Excuse me. Let me. Olu. Olu. Let me. Let me. Let me ask you a question. I have the floor now. I have just, the floor just wait. Now. Just wait. No, no, you have no, had. No. You have had the floor. You have had the floor. But you. He had had the floor. You spoke for much longer. Let me just conclude this idea. He is trying to misunderstand me. Let me conclude this idea, and then I'll come to you for You had the floor for a long time, and I did not interject. I didn't interject that. So, because so you, have just, you have been directing the people. Let me finish my submission. Okay. No, 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 no. No, you so have I, a chance to I, I, reject. Yeah, you have, reject a, you have an opportunity, and you will have your opportunity. No, 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 that's all right, Reverend. That's all yes, right, Reverend. Yes, yes, yes. So when you talk about, you know, good, uh, you know, governance and wasteful yes. streets, I'm asking, is Abdul Oro talking about this administration, or, or is talking about, the, we're talking about the past administration? Because I'm trying to find the next door, because... Some of the members of... No, no, he's clearly of, talking about... Wait, wait, wait. I, even I can help there. He's clearly no, no, talking I, I, about the Obasiaki administration. Of course. No, I'm, it's a rhetorical question, sir. Okay. Is, and, and I have a reason why I'm saying so. Mm -hmm. Because some of the members of this EPM were known... In the last <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm, 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 going, I'm going to have to go to a break. Uh, you know, uh, you know, time is a dictator. But I'll be right back. We'll be right back, and um, we'll we'll connect back up with you, Reverend um, Olu Martins, and um, well, you know, uh, Honorable Abdul Oro. And indeed, I don't know how we're going to manage this because I can imagine that the phones are burning. People want to phone in and also add their own. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
Okay, welcome back, and um, thank you very much, Reverend Olu Martins, for you know hanging with us. Are you still there? Yes, sir. You, okay. Um, you, you know, uh, I had to interrupt you to go to break, but we, when we're talking about uh, one of the things that Honorable Oro said about he and some colleagues, you know, they noticed that um, there's a departure from you know the good plans planning for Edo State. Um, you know, when, when he noticed that, long story short. Uh, it, it ultimately led to EPM. Now, the other part, the, the other matter about uh, wastefulness and that they observed, I, I just wanted to bring to your attention that, look, uh, what, is, what is it now? Political exclusion is not the same as wastefulness because I think you talked about or, both or of them. Or compensation. Or, uh, or compensation, that kind of a thing. So uh, could you please continue? But political exclusion is not the same as profligacy and all of that. Uh, you, you know, you know the, ch the challenge with English, especially when the the word is grandiloquent, that it can have multiple interpretations. Okay. It depends on the spectrum, on the side of the spectrum. Yes, that sir. Right. Grandiloquent. Yes. Carry on, yes. sir. Carry on, yes. sir. Yes. yes, thank you very much. So, and then, so you're you are talking about, so I'm asking to say, uh, I'm asking Abdul to say, how was it in the last administration? Nobody could stand and speak against the governance when Adam Soshomole was governor of the state. My group that he was several, and, and the NLC were severally beating blue black. Let him tell us how Ring Road was. I'm talking about good, good governance. They were, Ring Road was a massive, chaotic place where people who were talks, who are, by the way, members of the EPM today, because I, I'm a little bit aghast or amazed as to how civil society person like I will be in the same ship with some of the characters that we know who are in the you know EPM. So I, I'm not sure that there was any place where that was hectic for people to express their views about misgovernance okay. in their own opinion as in the last um, as in the last administration. This is a governor who Account, we have not heard much about profligacy because they are not the only beneficiaries of good governance. We are also the beneficiaries of good governance. And the preponderance of opinion, as far as those state is concerned, that this government may not be giving us everything that we want, but to the best of its ability, we are feeling the impact of the opacity led you know, at administration. Thank All you right? very much, Reverend. Reverend, yeah. Reverend, Reverend, uh, th th thank you very much, Reverend Lou Martins. I want to appreciate you for, you know, coming on here and giving us perspective, at least from your point of view. Really appreciate your coming on here. And um, now, um, Honorable Abdul. Well, you, you, you can see somebody who is not uh, honest about his uh, views. When I came in, he was talking about criticizing Oshomole's administration all the time. And there was, I mean, when Oshomole was there, but could he, he couldn't cite a single instance of being beaten up or talks, or being arrested okay. and taken to Oko prison. Okay. Now, um, as it, and he was talking about Ring Road. You know how, how Ring Road was when we came in, and then later you saw the water fountain and everything. It should go back to Ring Road now. And now they talk about training 10,000 teachers, digital teachers. Now call one or two of the commissioners, or even the commissioner for education, asking to go to the secondary school he attended and tell you how many teachers are there and in the primary school he attended okay right now so so, so re really it I'm seems to me that, that, is oral, that, that is you so deviation. you within the apc yeah. um, have taken on the administration of um you know um uh, 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 governor baseki because you are dissatisfied with um, the, way, has, the rate of progress absolutely because he, i by my i think psychologically he was not politically prepared to lead that is why you could see him so, sens so sensitive or insensitive well, okay. to, ch to, to, to criticism. Okay. For instance, I'll give you one example. You, you know, I'm not saying that um, anything that you say was done to your group and all of that is, uh, can be justified. But um, uh, with this kind of a stance, um, surely government will see you, as you, you can imagine, uh, Obaseki's administration, Governor Obaseki's administration, will see you as, um, well, I don't know, <laughs> certainly not a friend, even if we are not going as far as four. We supported him. We campaigned for him. We voted for him. We know him. We work with him closely. We know ourselves. Okay. 
So it's not a question of being friend or not friend. Okay. It's a question of saying if we co okay look, look uh, if we continue the way we are going. Okay. It's not going to lead to what the, 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 the outcome we expected. Because, I mean, having succeeded with Shomoli, mm -hmm. who expected that we cannot abandon projects that we started? Okay, let me. Or that we are and we are supposed to, it was supposed to have taken it beyond where Shomoli stopped. And, if you, there were and errors, in your considered opinion, that uh, has not happened. It has not happened. And if there were errors made during the Shomoli administration, he was supposed to correct them. There you go. You know? Okay, I remember the no, other I, day. I, I have, a, I have someone day, on the line. Just Somebody has been waiting on the okay, line. Okay, fine. Um, Let, uh, let's, let's hear him. Good, good morning, Mr. Manuel in Otupo. Good morning, Chief Yuri. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning to your guest. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm very sad about what is happening in Medo State. I'm sad too. Um, you see, people are so used to slush money in Nigeria that nobody wants to, uh, to face the truth and say it anymore. What is happening in the road state? I think it is, high, it is time now for Buhari himself to step into this matter and say to them, if not, if they go this way, APC will definitely lose a road state to PDC. Now, a, a, a APC slogan of honesty and integrity seems to surround only Buhari and Utibanjo. You can't really speak point the next person in APC that is close to integrity with them. No, so many of them do not subscribe to the dream of the president and his wife. So why are we allowing politics to drag us this way? Okay. All right. They don't say to please sit up. Uh, the president should come in and get them together to a round table. Get everybody, all the warring parties together mm -hmm. and iron out this thing so that you don't lose the justice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What do you think of his, uh, of his notion that if care is not taken, Edo could actually lose to well, PDP? Le let, me, let me say that um, in polit politics is about contestation. Ultimately, the decision will go to the people. That is what we are trying to avoid. We are trying to avoid a situation where APC will lose to PDP. Okay, he talked about, uh, I, let me point to one thing. The civil society groups in those state were already marching in the street asking questions about why the specialist hospital in Benin, the Benin Central Hospital, two years after it was commissioned, was not put to use. That hospital was built by Shomoli, five-star hospital. Everything was done, it was equipped and all. It took the, Buhari came to Edo state and commissioned it. It took public protest. For that hospital to be put to use, only for us to hear that he has privatized the hospital. Okay. Up to today, this, the, 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 the the new Iraq College, the Bermuda College, has not been put to use. You see, you see the point I'm making. Now he said he's going to take 25 percent of our shares in Azura Power to invest in uh, uh, Industrial Park. Mm. Azura is a top niche notch. I mean, something that we we think 10 percent now. 20 years from now will be something different. If he's going to do a, a park, we thought he had signed an MOU. Okay. Of, he has signed millions of MOU, MOUs anyway. Okay. In fact, they call you MOU, Governor, with China. So I thought they were going to do it. Why take 5% of the 10% we have in Azura mm. power to do an industrial park? We think that is not properly, uh, that is not a, a wise decision. And if, we, if he was not practicing a, a point of exclusion, yeah. there would have been a process of sitting down, discussing these issues, and then hearing just they will hear his justification i remember when Oshomori was trying to sell the edo, edo house in lagos there was a lot of protest we threw it open he met with traditional rulers met with them, all shades of opinion it was publicly debated okay and when we realized that public opinion was totally against it mm. even in esco we said no don't sell okay and we and didn't, he, and we didn't and sell he has it. been waiting for a long and, while and we didn't sell it and, and so a governor who doesn't listen to his people who okay. doesn't work with his people but cannot be a very good governor okay but effectively you become even though you're in the same party effectively epm has become a, an opposition force to the administration no it's not governor an opposition Basel. force it's a force a force a, a for pressure a, group if a, a, a force for rectification of our errors okay good morning mr he sorry for keeping you waiting good morning mr yore yes and good morning to your guests there. Sure. Good morning. Yes, my take on this issue, Mr. Yore, uh, is simple. The problem we have in Edo State, I'm from Edo, but I don't reside in Edo. 
The problem we have in Edo is that Edo State is a place I go to almost every month. Because my mom resides there and she refused to relocate to Lagos. So for that reason, almost every month I go to Edo. Even at times twice in a month, once I'm free to do that. The problem we have in Edo is about we having issues where the governors, the people are not accountable to their citizens. Understood. If it's about governors, it's about the people, you won't be having the problems you are having in Edo today. What we are having, Mr. Yori, is about power puzzle between two individuals who, to my concern, care less about the people who are even agitating on their behalf. By two individuals, are you are you meaning uh, well, Governor Baseki? The Governor Baseki and the um, governor, former Governor Adam Sushomole. Okay, and you current know, chairman of APC. So, yes, the chairman of the National Chairman of APC. So like the man who is talking there, who is saying the, gov the governor who don't listen to the people. The question that was, Mr. Yori, he is from Edo and from Edo, who, when Adams was also governing, is he a governor that listens to the people? You see, the problem we, we are uh, yes, seeing in Edo State today, is the thing is, this issue is not that here or there. What we have is about two individuals who are just struggling power. Mr. Yori, it is about the people. It is about the people. You won't be having what you're having today. But it's so sad that we have a set of persons in Edo State who don't really understand what is going on. Okay. Some are on this side, mm -hmm. some are on the other side, mm -hmm. just fighting on behalf of persons who are fighting in their own selfish interest. Okay, thank you very much, Ehi. Thank you very much, Mr. Ehi. Um, well, Ehi let, me, let me tell you Ehi's that... Ehi's, Ehi's point that, look, this is really the conflict between the former governor and the present governor, namely Oshio Mole and Obaseki. That is a tussle between those men that has now spilled over into all of this. Would you, would you buy into I, that? I would like to say that is a very strong, there is very strong public perception about that, that it's a power tussle. But why would there be a power tussle? I remember when we confronted, when we met, when these things were happening, I called, we, I even asked Oshomole, and I think that day Ni Adibayo was with him. I said, do you have any problem with, because Oshomole refused to speak out with the governor. His reply was that Godwin, this is a fight Godwin does not need. Godwin has asked him that he had rumor that he was going to make him an arm body. And when he said he was going to make him an arm body, he, that he was going to make him an arm body, and he told him, go and focus on your work. Go and do your work. You have not even done the third anniversary of your administration. If you do the th if you, after that, you can now start thinking of re-election, you know? So Oshomali is not going to be on the ballot okay. in, two, in 2020. One moment, sir. Let me, let me bring in Abraham in the UK. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. You know, uh, the issue that is going on in Edo State is total between uh, Adam Oshomali and uh, Obaseki. And Oshomali has never respected any other person while he was there. And he neglected Ezra Central. Tell me, as this gentleman who is there, any Oshomole project in Asia Central, why he was there. And even the, the, the speakership that was zoned to Asia Central, he made sure he removed it and gave it to, 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 to people from his own area. Mm -hmm. But what is there? He should give this man a free hand to rule. And why is he disturbing him? Oshomole is not an Asia State man. Has he ever respected any person? And then he helped him to get into that position. Later he fell out with Tadeni. Have you ever respected the chief Ikimi? Or DJ? Or someone should stay where he is. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Abraham. Appreciate your calling in. Let me clarify some of these sure, things. Sure. Where the person who basically has put there now as governor, uh, speaker is not from Mr. Central. It's from a it's an it's an not it's from put there as speaker. The, because the, the, the assembly he, is supposed he, he to come up with their own, their own speaker. That, absolutely, nobody was supposed to interfere. Nobody is supposed to put the guy from Mr. Center Central uh, is right now is one of those people that had not been sworn in. The guy who is there now is from Urumi. It's an artist. That is that. Then talking about projects, I can't remember everywhere he put projects, but I know there were projects in all over those states. Now, talking about uh, the, his relationship with Aneni, when we started, Aneni produced three commissioners in Oshomole's administration. They fell out after some time when Aneni was now decided to strike out certain uh, things from Edo State budget. So they started 
talking, you know, there was there, there were now public sniping about at each other. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't. If anybody says he didn't respect Anani, that is not true. But later mm -hmm. they reconciled. Okay. And even when Anani died, Oshamori was there at the funeral. Mm -hmm. I was there myself. Okay. It, because uh, the point he was making they, they was that he wasn't a listening governor. No, that, that's, this, that's where I, his name I have just told in. you that yeah, I'm if he was not a listening governor, he would have sold the Edo house. Okay. One and more. heaven would not fall. Okay. But he did not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yakub in Dokwemu, good morning, sir. Yeah, it's very good morning, sir. Good morning. And then good morning to your guest. Thank you very much. Uh, you see, uh, your guest said something earlier that is very so damning to me personally. Uh, what I know in this country is that the governor in this country, it is not even peculiar to a uh, state alone, all over the country. The governor in this country, Nigeria as a whole, they are too powerful. They are too powerful, so to say, because you just said something earlier that I don't know maybe it is true because I personally am not an Edo person, but I am a supporter of the APC and then I will continue to support them in as much as they are giving us a, a good governance. I will say that he says that the governor sack elected local government chairman. If yes. it is true, where is he in our law in this country that governor <laughs> have the power to sack, sack elected people. Go, uh, the chairman of a local government. See, usually the last caller says that the former governor was not a listening governor. In person of the uh, Adam to see on Does that mean that it's a prerogative for the incumbent governor not to also listen to the people? So the, the issue is this: how many, how many local governments in Edo State? How many people are supposed to represent in Edo people in the House of Assembly of Edo State? Okay. How many people in Edo State? Uh, out of assembly today. So, if a governor can deprive some people their constituency representation, what what type of a governor is that? So, basically, for me, I'm not an idiot, as I said earlier, but if you say it's a power tussle, a power tussle because some people want you to do something right, and then you choose to do it wrongly, and then you are saying that people should keep quiet, people that is campaign for you in order for you to become a governor. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, a, I'm not really uh, position to, to attend him in a meeting up and down. But in my own locality here, I, I campaign for, for this very particular party, APC as a, as a party. But I campaign for them, not expecting anything from them, rather than good, good governance. Okay. So if some of us do that, and then Mr. President do that, we will talk as the people are talking now. So don't say that because people are talking, they hate the government. Government should be able to do the right thing. And not the people to represent their constituency. That is it. All right. God bless Absolutely. You. Thank you very much for calling Absolutely. me. Absolutely. And people, some people have been asking me, how do you resolve this issue? Mm -hmm. Without the issue of the State House of Assembly being properly constituted, there can be no resolution. That is critical. It's key to it. Because right now, 14 members are at home. They were driven out of their hotel room. They were beaten by thugs. You know, right now, the... they have only nine members. And as we are talking now, those nine members are in Dubai. Some of them are in Dubai. I think some have... Allegedly. Not allegedly. We know them. We know ourselves. I know all the members in person. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So what, the issue is not about, we want to rescue our party. And the reason, we have, the reason why we are having this meeting is to reactivate the base, to explain to our people that it is not the party that is failing. Mm -hmm. It is somebody whom we have elected and who, who was supposed to implement the programs of the party, continue implementing, uh, you know, is, is uh, that, is, consolidating is that, the, is, the programs that we have started, that is deviating. Is there no chance of a rapprochement? There is a chance of rapprochement. Uh, uh, especially as both of you are of the same the party. The way it can be done, let me tell you, all the traditional rulers in Edo State, led by the Oba Benin, went to the president to say they have tried, please, pre Mr. President, intervene. Okay. Then he told the, 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 the Progressive Governors Forum, led by Carol uh, Fire Me, uh, the Governors Forum, they met, Several delegations, the Senate and the House of Representatives came to Edo State. That's he received right. them. Yes, they took a position. It's still, he he, he it's, went it, to it call this not everybody. Problem. It, yeah. um, Joshua so, in Irewale. Good morning, sir. Sorry. Uncle Yori, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, and happy weekend to you. Indeed. Uh, I would I would throw the line of uh, the last caller. This idea of uh, the powers of governor. When will governance be about? the interest of the people when there is so much bickering when you know at the state level now we have a problem 
You can imagine what is going on at the local government level. Maybe that is why everyone in Nigeria is calling Buhari, 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 as if the only government we have in Nigeria is federal. Now we have states that are not functioning because of crisis. For God's sake, can these people just bury the hatchet from the governor who is the executive person? He is the last order of the state. If there is no peace in the state, there is no governance. Please okay. let them settle down and mm. deliver dividends of the democracy mm -hmm. to the people. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for calling in. Now, this is the, all, all of this is about 2020, isn't it? Look, it's I, about, I, I, it's it's about, about the election and, the, and no doubt the, well, the, the interest of the have, governor to be It would be a reelected. pleasure for us mm -hmm. to sit back and allow our programs to campaign for us. And then the governor will just continue. Okay. You know, like when we were saying, in a, that was we, he coined certain phrases okay. from earmark to I mark. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, some yeah. governors say we have earmark this, yes. uh, earmark yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. to do this. Say, come and we want to I mark. Come and see what we have done. You know what I'm saying? That is that, that was what we used to campaign. And Oshomole won in all the 18 local government areas okay. in his re-election. It has never happened before. Well, well, so we wanted that to, that process to continue, oh. you know, uh, seamlessly. Mm -hmm. You know, but right now that is a challenge we face. Okay, that uh, honorable. We still want. We are not trying to. It, it, that is more or less like a, a rescue. You know. Okay, look at the last election. The governor did not win the House of Representatives, where he comes from. He lost the senatorial election. The lost the presidential election where he comes from. Okay. It, the, it, if bought for the bulk of the vote that came from Edo North, which yeah. was about 40, almost 45 percent of the total vote from Edo State, sure. even the, the 46 percent Buhari got in Edo State would not have been possible. So we think that the governor should have to humble himself, have reflect deeply, engage all the stakeholders. Uh, okay. We, we are not saying a governor should go and you, you, apologize or I, uh, engage, I hear you. embrace everybody and say, look. We have we started this thing together. We have made mistakes. We have had uh, we have had altercations. Let us see how we can resolve this problem. And all of Call you, and then all of say, you are members of APC. We are members of and, proud members of APC, founding members of APC. And you've just said that uh, there is a chance for a rapprochement. There is a, if there are, it's going to come from the governor. Because your money is not going to be on the ballot. Okay. He is the one that is going to be on the ballot. Okay. Okay. I am not going to be on the ballot we've, we've run because out. I am not running for governor. I would have loved to be able to speak with you for another one hour because there's so much stuff about Edo State and uh, also you'll be hearing from all sides. But I want to thank you very much that at least you've brought this matter uh, to to our viewers yes. uh, who have been reading about it in the papers as well, especially the the very unsavory event of uh, that you were, you know, uh, a part of. Thank God that you're safe and able to speak. Thank, to thank, thank God for that too. Indeed. Thank you very much, and I'm here, and I thank, thank God for that. Thank you very much. And so, so that's our program. Um, naturally, we couldn't have concluded on this, but, you know, at least we got a voice from Edo State itself, and we're seeing a totally dissenting voice from Honorable uh, Oro himself. Um, but that's our program. Um, we don't do tomorrow, so we'll, next time we'll be seeing will be Monday. Uh, do have a great weekend. I am Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.